Hi there. Welcome back to part three of Leading Our Own Way with Patrick Manifold. Important discussion points today. It was very insightful yesterday. If you've missed part one and two, please, please go back to part one and two. Um, it's a new structure that we're trying here at Leading Our Own Way, and I hope it builds up and, um, and works out for us. But today's episode, part three with Patrick, we talk about how he hid you know, he, he, how he hated himself uh, when he was younger and how important goal setting has really helped him better himself. And that really stems from his book, um, a book that I've got here, New Year, Better You. He talks about what it, it used to be called a different title, New Year, New You. And he didn't want to have that title because he wanted to talk about how these goals can be better than you any part of the year as well, I suppose. Um, fascinating book. All the information, all the information is in the show notes. We talk about small, simple habits changing as well. We discover purpose. We like to talk about dis how to discover purpose uh, and overcoming and transforming lives as well. All really important topics. Welcome back to part three with Patrick Manifold. You've mentioned it in your book about making small changes per day. And I talk about making, you know, one, one percent change opposed to making, you know, New Year's resolution is a bring one. You, you, I, I, I use that quite a lot. And then I, I came across it in your book. I was like, right down my alley. But we talk about New Year's resolution and by week three of January, it's gone. It's puff in the air. Right. Uh, but if we just do small little habit changes per day, that habit becomes normalized. And then within a certain period of time, obviously, time of frames, the, the time of frame is completely different for the individual, right. but it's become, the behaviors become normalized and the, your, your trajectory of your life begins to change. What, what, what do you think on that? When it comes to that, like I'm, I'm huge on goal setting. Actually, that book you have behind you is called New Year, Better You. It mm. used to be called New Year, New You. And we talk about how society changes. When I was, you know, first got into personal development, New Year, New You was like a really cool, like, say. And then all of a sudden it became this, all this whole, like, New Year, New You crap. And, like, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, New Year's resolutions, they're for stupid people. Oh, I don't need to. People would say, I don't need to wait until January 1st to set goals for myself. I can do it any time. But That's no one right. ever does. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I actually had to change that because I didn't want the people, like, the perception of the book to be that it was just kind of, like, New Agey and crap. That book is literally a blueprint to if you're unhappy, read that book, take the five steps, and you can create an entire new life for yourself. And I'm mm. proud of that book. And basically, I believe that everybody should have goals for yourself. I don't know what my life would look like. In fact, yes, I do. <laughs> Me when I was younger is what it would look like. Me when I hated my life and myself. That's what I would be if I didn't have goals. These goals pull the best out of me. They, mm. they make me a better person. They let me strive for things. And I set goals. And I'm a, now I'm a little bit crazy. I have like a 26-page document that has rules for my life, that has resolutions for my life, that has goals, short-term, long-term, 20-year goals, two-month goals, everything. Like everything's written out in like a ridic ridiculously long document. And I turn that into a vision board and I like have all these things. I don't expect everyone to go that far. Mm -hmm. But everybody every year should have at least one or two things to aim for because otherwise like why are you even getting up in the morning like what what is your life if you're not going after something that's great whether it be trying to provide like an inspiration for children or whatever the case may be you should be trying to be if you're a teacher how do you be the best teacher you can be that's a great responsibility that you have if you're a doctor if you're a nurse if you're a politician if you're anyone you should be trying to be the best version of that thing you can possibly be. Otherwise, what are you doing? What yeah. are you doing? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I can't wrap my head around people that just go through life with no desire to do, to do or be anything more than they currently are. I think that's a waste of their potential. It's a slap in the face of their <laughs> predecessors. It's, it's a shame. And yeah. I, could, I could be wrong. I am, I'm willing to admit that I could be, whatever, everything I just said was complete bollocks and none of that makes sense. And we're here for a little period of time. You should be selfish. And maybe that's the right answer. Other people might believe that. But I don't. I, yeah. I believe the most selfish you, thing you can do, I believe that the most selfish thing you can do is not grow, is to stay the same, is to get gradually decline and get worse. The best thing you can do is continuously try to be the best version of yourself. So I think it's people think that personal development, and we did a bit of piece of content on this a few months ago. People say that personal development is selfish. I think it's the most unselfish thing you can do. 
because the better you become, the more there is of you to give your entire community, to give your family, to give your loved ones, to inspire others, right? So I'm just, I couldn't be any more for goals. Call it, I don't care what you call it. Like New Year's resolutions get a bad rep. I don't care what you call it. Call it whatever you want. Call it, that doesn't matter. As long as you're setting a goal ahead of you, that's what gets you out of bed in the morning. That's like when people, when they retire, they die within a few years of retiring because they went from being mobile, right? A, a rolling stone gathers no moss to all of a sudden being mossy as hell and just kind of like just season up. That's why like so many people that retire have that fate and I, I will never retire. I never, I plan to like Warren Buffett, I plan to work until the day I die. There's someone around in my area where I live who is extremely successful and in their 80s now and still goes to work every day because they love it right so most people have jobs i've never had a job i don't know what that feels like i've never worked for so something which i hated I've, I've never really experienced that but most people do stuff they hate and they're, they're what do they say there's a quote that says most people are buying stuff to impress other people they don't know right and they don't even care about it, right it's, it's ridiculous yeah. So yes, as far as to long, long winded answer to your question, but goal set and I couldn't be more on board for it. Yeah, no, I, and I completely agree. It just, it just shows you how much mindset does help. And, you know, mindset is everything to me. And, you know, we, we, we've just recently learned what in the last 10, 15 years that you're not stuck with the brain at 18 or when you're fully formed brains right. now, you know, 24 for women and the, the men, 25, 26, 27, 28, whatever it may be. Um, it, we've proven that you can rewire your brain. You can, if you can constantly grow, you can constantly change your neural pathways, which means 100%. the trajectory of your life could change. I mean, look at you, you're a prime example of that, but you would go back to that typical example as well. You know, personal development, being selfish, you know, the airplane scenario with all the leadership books tend to use it, you know, where you put your mask on first. Exactly. Um, you do. I've always thought that if you can't look at, and that's what I realized with my journey, I couldn't do what I should need or should want to or what's perceived by society be the best at. I couldn't be the best at because I wasn't there myself, you know. Right. It was just unfortunate timing and I wasn't there, but you're, you're absolutely right. Mindset is everything and I think personal development is the most least, least selfish thing. Um, you know, for me, my purpose, I only realized maybe in the last two years what my purpose is and that's because I began on an individual journey to discover myself at a deep level, right? And I realized that well, as a professional, I wanted to be a teacher I always needed, to be the dad dad I always needed, and to be uh, a man, the man that I always needed. And I, I think if I had to put it down into a simple sentence, that's what my purpose would be, why I get up out of bed every morning. And obviously, most people give that silly answer, well, my mum and dad had me. <laughs> you need to think, obviously, a lot deeper than that. Um, right. Where do you think people can discover their purpose, though? how or not where or maybe where but how how where do you think the source for that is i think that the number one thing i always the piece of advice i always give everybody is you must create genuinely honest contrast between where you are now mm. and where you would love to be because this thing over here that everyone thinks is a pipe dream is actually like super realistic and, and capable they're capable of achieving it but they don't think that, so they live over here for their, their entire life. Yeah, so agree, number yeah. one, be brutally honest about all of the, and I'm using five fingers here, but like your relationships with, like with your family and your spouse, your health, your financial goals, because people, t money is like a dirty topic. You're from England, you know, it's like a, like a dirty topic, like sex. You're not allowed to talk about it publicly. Mm. But I don't know about you, but my water bill ain't free. My grocery bill ain't free. My gas bill ain't free. My clothes, my every you know fill in the blank a million things and life's never been more expensive so the idea that you don't have a financial goals and b you're not actively trying to get better in that area of your life you're not only doing a disservice to yourself but to your children and then to their children too so that's one of the top five and i mentioned obviously that in the book but you should with all those five or six areas like the main areas of your life like joy and passion and those things find out where you are right now and be brutally honest and then paint the picture of you know if i could have a magic wand and have the life of my dreams where would i be in those areas myself and then where what would other people say about me in those areas and yeah. then you can look at those two side by side and see the contrast and then you can figure out okay if i want to 
get here? What are some logical steps that I could take to get there? And it, it literally starts there, but most people never do that exercise or a version of it. And so they live in this mediocrity, this version of themselves that's safe enough. It's kind of like a warm bed. Like mm. it may not be, you know, the best house in the world or the best bed in the world or whatever, but I'm comfortable and, you know, no, one, no one's going to say anything to me here. So I'll just stay here and I'll get yeah. quieter and quieter and quieter and smaller and smaller until nobody cares. Mm. And if, that, if that's what you want, you have at it. But I, I couldn't be on a different, more different trajectory than that. And mm. that's what I try and inspire other people to do. Only because I know, like we talked about uh, in the other day when we were chatting, I know where I was and I know where I am now. And the only thing that's changed is my beliefs, right? That's it. What I believe about myself, what I believe to be true has changed. And then from that, the domino effect of the things that I've done with my life. And I'm not sitting here saying I'm like the, the richest, most successful, most happiest man in the world. I don't, I never claim to be that. Mm. But compared to me 10 years ago, oh my goodness gracious me, I am like, I couldn't be further from who that boy was, that young man. I couldn't be any further from who that was. And that's why once I, you asked me the other day why I write books and why I speak, it's because I feel like it's my obligation. Like I, I found the key, I found the secret and it's not that hard. It's, mm. it's, it's not that difficult. It's simple. It is very, very hard, but it's simple as far as like, there's a few steps that you can do to get there. You just have to do it over a long period of time. And I believe it's my duty to share that with other people because everyone has those dreams inside of themselves. Like they look at other people and be like, wow, I wish I was more like that person. I wish I was, I'd feel so much better about myself if I was like that, if I was more confident, if I was rich, if I was healthy, if I had a six pack, all these things, not knowing really deep inside that they're capable of having the exact same things. And I'm just trying to get more people to go ahead and just be great, be the version of themselves as the greatest version, because then I think that's good for everybody. Yeah, man, I completely agree and a great answer. Absolutely great answer. So your purpose, I feel like you've already answered it, but if you was to narrow it down into a, a, a very simple sentence and you could put it on a business card, let's say, um, what would your purpose be then? I would say that my, my mission in life, I don't know if it's my purpose or my destiny or whatever, but my mission in life is to inspire as many people as possible to create a life you love. Mm, love that. Because I believe you have the power to do that. Mm. And my next book, which I haven't written yet, but I know once I sit down to do it, it's going to pour out of me like water out of a glass. It's called Create a Life You Love. This, uh, I have like a little mini clothing brand, C-A-L-Y-L -L, period, Create a Life You Love, period. Um, mm. And I'm going to be doing stuff with that in the future. That's what, kind of like my mantra and that'll be um, kind of like probably the core work of my entire the rest of my life is to to help people to do that because i think i can do it to i'm gonna try and do it on a grand scale like i want to help a million people to create a life they love that would bring me so much joy i believe it would create a great legacy for for my children to be proud of my great 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 grandchildren mm -hmm. to be proud of uh, so yes i'd say that was my that was my kind of mission in life yeah, well, you're definitely going down that track, that's for sure. And I can vouch because I don't know if it was quite 10 years ago, but it's probably not far off 10 years since we met, um, probably since we've seen each other. But I can definitely vouch, uh, not that you were, I, I would have seen that another side of you per se, but um, a, a huge transformation in the last 10 years from, from what I remember you being. That's for sure. Um, not that I didn't like you, mate, just so you know. <laughs> but <laughs> you, so know. before you mentioned, let's go back in time then. Let's go back to the beginning. Um, you mentioned before about yourself and you didn't like your, your, the, the younger self of Patrick Manifold. Paint a picture of your childhood for us, or, or where, where you're comfortable or you think it, it began. Okay. So like all, I'll go all the way back to the beginning when I, mm -hmm. I would come from a place called Great Yarmouth in England. And I was actually, I was given a speech the other day and I was trying to paint a picture of my, where I was from. And I wanted some stats to like kind of back it up. And I couldn't believe some of the stats. Like it's one of the poorest places in the UK, has one of the wow. most like underprivileged places. There's so many people who are out of work, like 26% of people don't have any qualifications, all these things, which I didn't even know to be perfectly honest. And basically I was trying to say like, it was, I was brought up in a place where it wasn't cool to try hard. <laughs> Nobody really was ambitious. And everyone's negative. A lot, a lot of people are on the dole. A lot of people are just kind of taken from the government, things like that. And basically, it's like, it's like this system of, 
and I'm not trying to shit on my hometown because I actually am super proud of my hometown and I love my hometown and I love every anyone that comes from there and is trying to do something good in the world. So I'm not trying to do that, but I am trying to paint the picture of it's a place where it's not a place for dreamers. Let's put it that way. It's not a place for people that have big ideas and big dreams and aspirations and things like that. That's not what people, no one's going to support you. I remember, I remember when I found, fell in love with basketball and I tried to tell people that I was going to, one day I was going to go to America and I was going to play in the NCAA and I was going to play professionally. And I'd like to say that I had support like close to me, but I didn't have any support. I didn't have any support close to me because it was just so ridiculous. No one could wrap their head around it. We were so poor. The idea of even going to America on vacation was ridiculous, let alone moving there. And then the idea that this skinny little like kid from Great Yarmouth who didn't start playing basketball until he was 13 is going to go and try and go to America and compete with the best athletes in the world at that sport. Like you, 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 they, everyone was saying, every time I was stupid, when I went through school, I was in and out of like basically getting expelled because I had like behavioral issues. Mm-hmm. and I was just branded as a stupid kid. Like, I was just a stupid kid. I didn't feel stupid in my mind. I felt like I was actually quite intelligent, but I never really applied myself, uh, and I just turned into, like, this class clown, constantly in trouble, and, yeah. Anyway, so that was me as, like, a kid, mm-hmm. bad kid. I had four sisters. I was the middle kid. They were two. My two old sisters were best friends. My two younger sisters were best friends, and I was just this oddball in the middle that wanted to wrestle and play football and all this kind of stuff. So I was kind of like on my own a lot. And uh, yeah, I was miserable for, for most of my childhood. And then some stuff happened to me that like I would never want to happen to any kid. Like things would happen to me like people would um, that were not close to me, close to me, but people in my life uh, would kind of put me through things that no kind of kid should ever have to go through. Um, and that left scars, I'm sure, like it, it had effects on like who I became as a man later on. It no longer does. I've, I've kind of, I'm at peace with all that stuff, but I'm in a really good place now. But back then, obviously it was just challenge after challenge after challenge after challenge. And I was inside me. I remember being eight years old and it seems like such a ridiculous thing to think, but I felt like I was destined for greatness. I felt like I had something inside of me that was special. I didn't really know what that meant. I just knew I was going to do big things one day and people were going to know who I am and I was going to achieve like fun, cool, like things that like would impress me as a kid. And then as I got older and older and older, and I'm talking to like teenage, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, I'm now getting in trouble. I'm in gangs. Um, there's criminal activity happening around me. Uh, there's things that I'm doing that I'm not proud of. And I have that voice, that greatness inside of me voice. Right. It's just, it's not even there. It's like this tiny little mouse. And that, like, I've allowed society and all the people around me and my experiences to crush the dreams of that young man who was so ambitious when he was young. And everyone told me I was going to be a failure and I was stupid and I left school with no qualifications. I was an idiot, blah, 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 blah. Waste of space. Most likely to go to prison was like my thing when I left high school. So, and then I remember being, and I told this story the other day for the firefighters. I remember being in a bachelor apartment with my girlfriend who <laughs> she paid for everything. My, my living room, my kitchen, my dining room, and my bedroom was all the same room. And I wasn't paying for it. She was. I was trying to like, chase my dream of being a basketball player and smoking 20 cigarettes a day, staying up till three in the morning, drinking just every day, like mm-hmm. copious amounts. And I remember, I remember hating myself. I remember still having this like this thing inside me, like I was still quite confident and still like I wanted to do cool things, but I wasn't ambitious. I'd stopped trying hard. I it was too I was too I was too cool to try hard. I didn't want to fail in public. I was afraid of failure. All these things, and I remember like an experience happened to me, and I I actually it was a time where I was playing basketball and I didn't play as much as I wanted to, and I was like I got home and I was so upset. And I was crying. I remember crying in this little tiny bachelor apartment. And I was like looking at myself in the mirror and I was like shouting at myself, like, who, who, the, who, the, who the hell are you? Like, you're, you are a waste of space. You've become everything that everyone said you were going to become. You've allowed yourself to do that. Why are you smoking 20 cigarettes a day and trying to call yourself a basketball player? Why are you staying up till three or four in the morning when you know you have to get up and coach kids at 10 a.m. and now you're hung over? Like, who are you? What is this waste of the talent that you were born with, this waste of the potential you were born with? And it wasn't long after that that I was up late 
one night and the, there was an infomercial came on and there was this massive American guy who was like totally obnoxious, but really cool. And his name was Tony Robbins. And he had this book called, I think it was Awaken the Giant Within. And for whatever reason, at that particular point, it spoke to me. And I went to my girlfriend and I asked for 20 pounds, like if she could give me the money to buy this book. Cause, and that was like a whole week's worth of uh, groceries or you know food shopping at that point for us. Yeah. So she was like, you've never read a book in your life. What the hell are you going to do with this book? And I said, I just need it. I'm going to do it. I walked into town. I took it home and I didn't stop reading. It took me like two or three days and I read the whole thing from cover to cover. My life changed forever. The trajectory of my life changed because what I read in that book is what you touched upon a little while ago is that you have the ability to change what's on the outside if you change what's on the inside. Okay, if you change the record, if you change, if you have a new belief, if you cultivate new beliefs, if you have new ideas, if, when, it, when you start to think different, you start to act different. And when you start to act different, you get different results, right? And then you can just follow that path forever. And literally, I went from being this waste of space who hated his life, hated himself, to within a year and a half of that, I was, my, my childhood dream of going to America came true. Yeah. And then another four years after that. And then that kid, that kid that was never got to see in anything that was just a failure was a dumb kid he went to university in america and graduated summa cum laude with highest honors nice. my mom came to flew to america to watch me graduate and i still i have a picture of me holding up my like diploma with like all the like regalia on she's just born because that's what she's most proud of obviously my mom's a teacher and she she just couldn't believe she said i, I had to come and see it for myself because that person who walked on that stage that day, who was an all-American athlete, all-American academic, who had won pretty much every award that was capable of winning, was one of the, you know, the greatest uh, like athletes, like student athletes in that school's history. Thankfully, like it's just it was a completely different person. That was a pretty short time period between those yeah. two things happened. Like you know, talking like five or six years, yeah. and now obviously ballooned out another ten years after that, and things have obviously got even better. But I am just fully. Like I fully believe that everybody has the power to change their life. They just need to think different. And sometimes okay. you need, and that's why I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be what the Tony Robbins book was for my life. I'm trying to be that. And maybe it's just like someone sees one piece of content. Like I don't care. I used to care if people saw it. Mm. And now I'm just like, I'm going to put it out there. And my emotions, my happiness, my self-worth is not tied up in how many people see it. I'd love 100 million people to see it every single time I post something because I try to put positive stuff out there. But I'm like, if I don't get any likes or shares or any of that shit, I don't care. I mm. couldn't care less. And that, that's different from me 10 years ago. But now it's just like, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep working at this thing to try and spread this positive message that I have. And if people like jump on board with it, which thousands of people have, but if no one else does ever again, I'm still going to keep doing it. Because I believe that's the best thing that I can give the world. It might not be as great as what other people can give, maybe, mm. but it's my best. And I'm going to keep giving my best so that I can, I can when, I, when my time comes, when I'm, I don't know, when my time comes when I'm like at least over 100 is my goal. Mm. When my time comes, I want to be able to rest knowing that I, I didn't leave anything out there. I didn't mm. squander my gifts. I didn't, so, yeah. I didn't let my potential go to waste. Right. I want my children to be proud of me. I want to have, I want to leave a legacy that inspires other people that they can be great too. So none of the stuff I talk about is about being special. I talk about like the boring stuff, like self-discipline and hard work and self-belief. Like it's, it's not like these aren't my ideas. These, Plato was talking about that thousands of years ago. Like mm. these aren't my ideas, but I'm modernizing them. Like, like my new book is like inspirational wisdom. Like it's kind of like a new age wisdom where it's like common sense and I'm not afraid to, you know, ruffle a few feathers with my beliefs potentially, but it all comes with, it all comes from love. So to answer your question, yes, like drastic, drastic changes. Like the person, like the person I was when I was 170 pounds to the person I was when I'm 225 pounds of pure muscle and 4% body fat. Like those are two, like physically they're different, mentally they're different, emotionally they're different. Uh, and I just want to inspire others that, if they want to change, they have the power to change. They just have to, they just have to decide. Yeah. Do you think it was the, um, I, I, it didn't line up. Well, you said about the Tony Robbins um, change. I think it was just before that though, but that helped you kind of 
accelerate it maybe um you said you looked at yourself in the mirror i do was it the tony that was pivotal for you but what made you look in the mirror i want to know what because you, you're right it was such a small time in that change of of being negative to going i'm going to change everything i'm going to i'm going to achieve my dreams i'm going to achieve my goals Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.